In this series of videos, I'm going to be overhauling the bottom end of my 2017 KTM 250 EXC. The bike has done 456 hours, still runs great, but I decided it's a good interval to do some preventative maintenance and overhaul the bottom end, including changing out all the uh, bearings and also putting a new conrod in the crankshaft. You'll be able to follow step by step. I'll share any information regarding special tools and also tips and tricks. In this video, I'm going to be measuring the run out and truing my newly rebuilt crankshaft. In the KTM service manual, they provide some information regarding crankshaft run out measurement setup and also a specification for run out. So you can see here, uh, the specification for run out is less than or equal to 0.03 millimeters, uh, which is equal to 30 microns. So this is a very small amount and uh, you need to do a very careful measurement uh, using some accurate dial gauges. Um, if the measured value does not meet the specification, um, you'll need to true or align the crankshaft. So in this video, I'm going to show the measurement and also how to do that alignment. So you may ask why it's important to have a small amount of runout on your crankshaft. Well, two main reasons. One is if you have excessive runout, uh, it may result in uh, larger amounts of vibration, which is not nice while you're riding. Uh, the other is uh, the bearings uh, supporting the crankshafts uh, will probably wear out much faster. So it's important to uh, measure the run out and uh, optimize it by truing the crankshaft. So as you can see in the recommended test setup, uh, the crankshaft is being supported between two dead centers in a bench center and then two dial gauges are used um, to measure the run out at the bearing journals. By using the two dead centers, uh, the crankshaft uh, can rotate around a reference axis and then you can measure the deviation from that reference axis. So what you're actually measuring is total run out, which includes uh, misalignment of the crankshafts plus any uh, machining inaccuracy of the shafts. This is the setup I'm using to measure run out of the crankshaft. Um, so I'm using a lathe and I've removed the chuck and installed a dead center. And I've also got a dead center in the tailstock. Um, and I'm using two dial gauges. These are one micron per division uh, dial gauges. I'll put the part number in the description of the video. And I've got them mounted uh, using two Noga uh, adjustable bases with uh, magnetic bases so they can attach directly to the lathe. And the Noga stands have this uh, adjuster at the back which allows you to lower the dial gauge down onto what you're measuring and make a fine adjustment. It's really handy, uh, especially as I'm going to be taking the crank out uh, probably quite a few times to uh, adjust the alignment. And the dial gauges I'm using are one micron per division and one millimeter of travel. And I've installed some 50 millimeter extensions so I can position them directly above the bearing journals uh, without interfering with the crank webs. And I should note that it is possible to tree your crank and measure run out with just one dial gauge. It just takes a lot longer. You have to take notes and swap it around and, and re-measure. So uh, certainly a lot easier with two dial gauges uh, if you have the budget to purchase two. Here you can see the crankshaft ready for a run out measurement. Um, I've got it held between uh, the two dead centers. So when installing it, uh, it's important to put a little bit of oil on the dead centers and also adjust uh, the force pushing in using the tailstock. Um, you don't want any play, but uh, you don't want too much friction. Uh, so adjust that and then lock the tailstock off. And then uh, lower your dial gauges down. And uh, the measurement point I'm using is the uh, bearing journals. Uh, so when setting up your measurement, it's important to uh, have the measurement point uh, far away from uh, the reference uh, holding point. So in this case, I'm using the dead center at the end. Uh, so uh, the bearing journal is uh, the furthest point away that I, I can measure. And the same on this side. Um, another way of doing the measurements is instead of using dead centers, if you don't have them, is to support the bearing journals on V-blocks and uh, perform your measurement uh, away from that point. 
the problem with that is it's actually quite tricky because uh, if you support it on the bearing journal, for example, this side, uh, you can't measure here because this is threaded. This is tapered, so it means that uh, while you're doing your measurement, if there's any lateral movement, uh, that will create a large error. Um, so really, uh, the furthest away measurement point you can use is here and that's quite close to the support point um, so any run out will uh, appear very small um, basically the, f the closest the closer you get to the support point the smaller uh, the run out uh, the measured run out is going to be um, so you want to try and maximize the distance between the support point and the measurement point and the same on this side I can't measure here can't measure on here because of the keyway so I'd have to measure here which is very close uh, to the support point. So really the best way of measuring this crankshaft is to use dead centers, create your reference axis, and uh, do your measurement on your bearing surfaces. So there are various types of crankshaft misalignment that can occur. Uh, this example is with the crankshaft web spreading. So as you go away from the pin, uh, the gap between the two webs increases. So when you're measuring the run out, uh, you'll find that when the pin is at the top in the left hand picture, uh, the two dial gauges will both read a low. And as you rotate the crankshaft, when the pin is at the bottom, uh, both of the dial gauges will read a high. And the dial gauges will move in phase. Uh, so this is pretty easy to spot. And uh, the method of trimming this is to squeeze the two uh, crank webs together, typically using a vise. The next case is uh, with the crankshaft webs pinched together. So as you go away from the uh, pin, uh, the webs become closer together. So this is a reverse of the previous case. Uh, when the pin is on the top, uh, both the dial gauges will read high, and when the pin is on the bottom, they'll both read low. And to true uh, the crankshaft with the webs pinched, uh, typical method is to use a, a metal wedge and drive it between uh, the two webs to spread them out. Another crankshaft misalignment is to have the webs twisted on the pin. Um, so when you're doing your run out measurement you'll find that uh, when the pin is at the front uh, one of the dial gauges will read a low and the other high and as you rotate uh, the crankshaft through 180 degrees so the pin is at the rear uh, they'll swap over. So the method to true uh, crankshaft with uh, webs which are twisted is to use a heavy copper or brass hammer and you hammer on the uh, crankshaft web uh, which was reading high and then uh, remeasure. And of course you could have a combination of these misalignments and uh, it might make uh, working through the uh, truing process a little more tricky. Um, but typically if you uh, tackle one of the misalignments um, and get that as good as possible and then work on the other type of misalignment, uh, you can work through it and uh, improve the run out and get within spec. Okay, so now I'm doing my first run out measurement and I'm rotating the crankshaft slowly and uh, monitoring uh, the dial gauges. And I can see that uh, they're both approximately moving in phase. There is a, a slight difference, but uh, in general, they're moving together. And I also note that when the pin is at the top, so right now it's right at the top uh, at the measurement point, and both the dial gauges are measuring the minimum. Uh, so I've adjusted the dial gauges so zero is at the top. So anything to the left uh, is lower than the zero, and anything to the right is higher. So as I move uh, the crankshaft round, and I've got the pin at the bottom now, and they're both reading a maximum value. And I move it back to the top, and they've gone back to a minimum. So because they're mo both moving uh, the same way in phase, and that I'm getting my minimum measurement uh, when the pin is at the top, it means that the crank webs are actually spread apart uh, going away from the pin. So I'll need to uh, press the crank webs together in the vise to uh, adjust that. And regarding the actual run out, uh, you can see the clutch side, which is this side, 
uh, is going from maximum about 40 um, down to just below 30 so it's a little over 70 microns uh, run out and the flywheel side is going from about 30 uh, to just less than 60 so that's about uh, 90 microns run out and the spec is 30 uh, so on the flywheel side it's uh, approximately three times the spec um, on the clutch side it's just over twice okay as I explained just now uh, the crank webs are spread going away from the pin uh, so I'm, I'm using a vise uh, to squeeze them together and I'm using soft jaws in the vise and I'm just going to do it a little bit and uh, measure the run out again I don't want to overdo uh, it so I'll repeat if necessary And I'll retest that. Okay, so I just squeezed the uh, crank webs in the vise together, um, and I'm doing my second uh, run out measurement now. And uh, the clutch side now is measuring about uh, it's about 50 microns, and uh, the flywheel side is about 60. Uh, so it has improved, but uh, I still need to make some adjustment. Okay I've squashed the uh, crank webs together a little more using the vise and uh, now the clutch side is measuring about 30 microns and uh, the flywheel side is just under 40 so I'm getting closer to the upper limit of the spec now which is 30 microns. Okay so I've done some more adjustments uh, using the vise and now you can see uh, the clutch side the run out is uh, about 15 microns and the flywheel side is about 25 so it's improved quite a bit and it's actually within spec now but I want to see if I can uh, optimize it and get it even smaller so I'm watching the dark gauges and they're not moving in the same way as they were before they're out of phase um, so if you watch the uh, flywheel side this one uh, the high is around here so when the crank pin is down at the back and compared to this one the high is when the crank pin is here so that means the uh, webs are twisted so um, by determining uh, the movement of the dar gauges I know I need to hit the flywheel side crank uh, web here and make an adjustment. So I'm going to do that and remeasure. And for making twist adjustments, so um, I'm going to be hammering on this web. I found the technique that uh, works well for me is for me to sit down on a stool and rest my hand on my leg and support this web. And then uh, with a hammer, I hit the other one. So I'm using a copper hammer. This is uh, one and a half pounds, and you have to hit it quite hard. So I've made quite a few adjustments now and the run out is well within spec. On the clutch side uh, you can hardly see the dial gauge moving, it's less than one micron. Um, originally uh, the, when I measured the crankshaft run out before I disassembled it, it was four microns on the clutch side, so a bit better than originally. Um, on the flywheel side it's measuring about 18 and uh, before I rebuilt it, it was 14, so slightly worse, but still within spec. So I'm happy with that, and I'm going to call it a day. So in closing, uh, the main recommendations I have for doing the run-out testing uh, to hold the crankshaft uh, between dead centers. Uh, that definitely makes a, you know, a really solid uh, high-accuracy test setup. Um, and also having some high accuracy, high resolution uh, dial gauges, so similar to the ones I'm using with uh, one micron per division uh, reading, uh, makes it easy to see uh, small changes. And regarding truing, I recommend making small changes and uh, repeating your run out measurements to monitor how they're going. Uh, you might observe that uh, one misalignment that you previously saw went and you're seeing a different one and I have to use a different uh, uh, truing technique uh, but it's easy to monitor that if you make small changes 
Um, it may take some time to get it uh, within spec, but uh, I guarantee you if the crankshaft isn't damaged in good shape, you will get there. Um, it just takes a little bit of time and patience. And in the next episode, part five, I will be reassembling the bottom end. <laughs>